Step nine is an important one. When we first started working on our 10 steps, we looked at what the literature was saying and it recommended no pacifiers. So we simply removed them from the unit and everybody was on board. We came up with alternative ways of comforting babies. You too can get rid of the pacifiers in your hospital. We set a date. We let our physicians know so they can tell families. We let our staff know. It's important to have that stop date because if you say we're going to get rid of them but you don't have an actual date, then they tend to always stay around for long periods of time. When babies need comfort, we just use a glove finger and allow the baby to suckle on our finger to calm down. We can also teach our families, our mothers and our dads, how to calm babies in this manner also and a need for a pacifier is just not there. Pacifiers can mask feeding cues. At this point, we are trying to really establish a great milk supply for mom, and babies don't always feed on schedule. Sometimes a pacifier comes into play to kind of subdue that feeding cue, which is not really great in terms of breastfeeding success. We routinely give them, in the case of a circumcision, for comfort suckling, and then we toss them before the babies are returned to their moms. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends waiting at least a month prior to giving any artificial nipples or pacifiers. That includes a bottle as well. We try to be on the offensive instead of the defensive. We tell moms in our tours and in our prenatal classes that if you'd like to use one, you may. You will have to bring your own, but here are the risks involved. As healthcare professionals, we can reduce the use of artificial nipples by telling mothers the reason why we don't want to give a, a bottle nipple or a pacifier when they're establishing breastfeeding is because we want to build the milk factory and the baby is the general contractor. One of the things that I like to talk about at the 36-week visit is the importance of avoiding early introduction of pacifiers and bottle nipples. Especially in the early days, it's very important to get as much stimulation to the breast as possible to help the milk to come in as soon as possible and to help get a good milk supply established. If there's some reason that the baby can't feed at the breast early on, um, we prefer not to introduce artificial nipples. We would prefer to use an alternative um, method to feed the baby, such as spoon feeding or cup feeding. When supplementation is necessary, the way we protect breastfeeding is how we deliver it and what we deliver. So we have the mother express colostrum. We can deliver that by spoon or finger feeding with a syringe or with a cup. We again discuss those options and then depending on what her decision is, we will proceed from there. The cup feeding probably has the most evidence behind it, has been studied the most extensively. The staff training is key in this. The more we educate the parents, it has to begin also with our staff to have competent and confident bedside nurses who from the beginning start talking about breastfeeding and who give out the evidence-based knowledge that we know what we're talking about and this is a good thing, providing the perfect food for your baby. That's our responsibility. I feel like I make a big difference every time I can help a mom breastfeed, even if it's one feed, one day, one week, six months.